Hi, I'm Alex. My talk's about the continual technological shifts in the threat to photojournalism. Since the birth of photography, the medium has been on a course of constant transformation. One influence has been widely considered more influential than others, that being technology. In today's world, we are all accustomed to the simple technology that surrounds us, with the majority of people constantly carrying a device with image-taking capability. The rise of digital technology in recent years has developed so far to a point that has enabled anybody with the available equipment to take the technical skill out of the image-taking process altogether. Looking back at the history of photography, in the past, to capture images, it was key to understand the equipment and the alien process. Comparing such a process to the photographers of today, we find ourselves in quite the opposite scenario. Unlike the past, ever simplifying photographic technology has increased the amount of photographers, be them amateur or professional. <coughs> With this rise of photographers and technology, this must be having an effect on what exactly it is to be a photographer. One area which seems heavily affected is photojournalism. To understand the current state of photojournalism, it is key to look back and recognise the major shifts that have occurred within the medium. The origins of the modern photojournalist stem back to the 1990s, this time to be proved of one, one of considerable change in photography as it ushered in the digital era. Although work had been taking place for years before to create electronic devices, the 90s signalled the start of the consumer levital digital camera. Once a piece of technology and equipment left only to professionals, it was now available to the abutting photographer, allowing them to capture and transfer images. The first digital camera release was seen on the 17th of February 1994 with the Apple QuickTake 100. Over the coming two years, multiple manufacturers embraced the digital age, releasing their own digital cameras. From the 90s onwards, the race to simplify and make photography available to the masses had begun. The oncoming years saw the gradual progression of the digital format, seeing the release of newer digital cameras on a regular basis. Almost in unison, the digital camera and the mobile phone had developed, and after a short while, the integration process had begun, with technology once again pushing the boundaries for photography. Alongside photography, camera and mobile phone integration had been trialled by Apple in the 90s, with varying degrees of success. Unlike the speed of the digital camera's progression, the aim of integrating it with a mobile phone took longer to become mainstream. The dawn of the new millennium saw the next shift. By this point, the digital camera was well on its way to the form we know now, with the compact digital camera readily available to the mass market. By 2002, Nokia released the 7650, which was the first device of its kind with an integrated camera and the ability to share media to large numbers. 2004 saw the release of the Nokia 3220, which was the first device of its kind to have camera and internet capability. During the years following, the desire to improve technology took hold with manufacturers like Motorola, Sony Ericsson and LG making it commonplace to integrate cameras into their mobile devices. Throughout the 2000s, the race was on to create a new type of technology, one which had everything, the camera, internet and mobile communication. By creating such a device, photography was set to experience its largest shift yet. Unlike the digital shift, the introduction of the mobile camera phone promised to enable anyone who owned a mobile camera device the chance to capture and share images instantly. Now, in 2013, after some 15 years of technological progression, photojournalism has changed with the times. In recent years, the rise of the smartphone has transformed photography. In January 2007, Apple released the iPhone, followed a year later with Google releasing their smartphone. With photography apps such as Instagram, high-quality cameras and multiple communication platforms, the smartphone has revolutionised photography, making available a tool which can capture images and be shared instantly at the tap of a button. With technology swiftly improving, photojournalism finds itself with a new type of journalism, citizen journalism, the collection, dissemination and analysis of news by the public by means of mobile phones or digital cameras. This new type of journalism has increased at a resounding rate. In 2012, at the Six Site Future of Imaging conference, it was revealed that worldwide 741 million people owned a mobile device with image-taking capability and with 91% of smartphone users taking a single photograph at least once a month, it clearly illustrates the rising number of amateur photographers. Many of the stats are reflected in the popularity and abundance of mobile imagery that can be found. For example, in October 2012, Hurricane Sandy struck the east coast of America. In the midst of the chaos and devastation that was left in its wake, large numbers of people took to the streets equipped with 
equipped with mobile phones, cameras and internet, and began to document. Taking to social media, people were able to share their images with millions in an instant. At the time, Time magazine chose to cover the event using, the, using Instagram. With a feed that attracts 261,000 followers, Time magazine also sent out their own photographers. In total, five photographers were sent across the eastern seaboard to cover the event through the live feed. In an article published in Forbes magazine, Time's director of photography, Kira Pollock, said, we just thought this was going to be the fastest and the best way we can cover this. The feed proved so successful that it gained 12,000 followers over the 48 hour period, adding more users to the ever expanding network. The popularity of the, these images proved so successful that in November 2012, uh, the popularity of these images proved so successful that in the November 2012 issue of Time magazine, an Instagram photograph shot by Benjamin Lowy featured as the cover image, proving that the strength of the technology we find ourselves with has the power to compete with what was once traditional and in this case be extremely successful. With the rise of mobile photography and with more and more media channels and papers choosing to use amateur citizen journalism over professional image, it seems as though this form of image taking has become the norm. In January 2012, in an online article, the Guardian Executive Commercial Director stated that the loss-making newspaper was moving towards an open vision for journalism, whereby lay people who may not have any formal expertise will be allowed the key to the media group's future. Such a statement from a national media group shows how the media have been forced to adapt alongside technology. In a world where major news events are first broadcast on social media and photography applications, the pace of photojournalism has had to step up a gear leaving the future for the professional photojournalist photo uncertain. With the future uncertain, what is next? As time progresses, photojournalism will become an ever more open and shared form of photography. In a medium that is defined by who it supplies for, financial implications play a key role. With the accessibility to free imagery rising, this type of amateur photojournalism can only grow. With the tools we have available and the empowerment that comes with them, it will be almost impossible to stem the flow of the citizen photojournalist. With an ever-growing database of imagery coming, coming from various social media sites, in the future it would be ignorant for the media to ignore such a large source. With 6.9 million users logging onto Twitter daily, and with Instagram gaining 100 million users in just over two years, the competition is ever-present. I believe if neglected, such users will turn to the media they contribute to, leaving the recognised media virtually extinct. Already we are seeing photographers anticipating the next change in photojournalism. Two examples can be seen in the work of Ballas Gardi and Tara Koyama, who in September 2010, whilst embedded with US Marines, produced a series of photographs shot on iPhones for Foreign Policy magazine. These images were a breakthrough for photojournalism. For the first time, they were produced solely on a handheld mobile device. Unlike professional photographers on the most part, Koyama credits the iPhone as a useful device. Drawing on its lightweight sealed body, which is perfect for shooting in the dusty environment of Afghanistan. Considering all the technological innovations photojournalism has experienced throughout its existence, it still, it still remains sought after. Aside from the ever-changing technology, the eye of the photographer and the skill of composing an image has with to change. In an article by Professor David Campbell in March 2010, he said, as a practice, as a mode of information, photojournalism and documentary photography is very much alive. And it is because over the last 50 years, it has not tied its entire future to the modes of distribution that are now undergoing revolutionary changes. The future has many challenges, but it is a future that has already moved well beyond the fortunes of newspapers and magazines. For me, this quote solidifies the fact that photojournalism as a form of image taking will always be desired. The media which photojournalism is shared through will continue on a constant path of technological transformation, shaping itself but never shaping photojournalism. Whereas whether shot from a mobile device or from a digital SLR, the need to report information will stay unharmed by the technological shifts that surround it. Thank you.